Hello, this is my August 2022 update on the latest UK credit card news and offers. In a moment, I'm going to tell you about a pretty spectacular welcome bonus from American Express. I'm going to also tell you about a new cashback credit card from Asda. A few other bits and pieces, but I want to start off with an update for anyone who has the John Lewis Partnership credit card. Now, if you watch these videos regularly, you'll know that back in May, they closed this card to new applicants. So you couldn't get it from the end of May onwards because John Lewis are moving their credit card provider from HSBC over to New Day. And as a result, there will be, at some point later this year, a new John Lewis credit card. We don't know what it's going to look like. They haven't shared that information yet, but it will come at a later date. At the time, though, back in May, when they closed it to new applicants, John Lewis said, existing customers, carry on using your card right now. You still earn your points, still ready to use it, no problem at all. Now we know what it means for you, actually, what's going to happen to that card. For the 31st of October, at 6 p.m. on the 31st of October, the card will stop working and your account will be closed. And this has a couple of important things to know about. The obvious one is you won't be able to use it anymore for your spending. Now, if you're just doing it normal spending, you've got another card, that's fine. You just transfer, you swap out your wallet and use another card. So that shouldn't be an issue for you. As long as it's not the only card you carry on, with, carry around with you. But they'll send out letters, they'll send out emails. So you should be very aware of this, despite what I'm telling you right now. You get the reminders later on. Um, the other big thing to bear in mind, though, is when it stops, it's not just about uh, those immediate purchases. There may be some... Uh, continuous payment authorities you set up on it. So maybe you use your credit card to pay for your Netflix subscription. You know, that won't carry on. And there might be some important things you want to keep getting paid for as time goes on. So make sure you go into those accounts and change it. Have a look at your statements, see what those regular payments are and do it now. Just change it to a different card now so you don't have to worry about that later on. You also need to think about if there's any advanced things that you've paid for with the card which will be after the 31st of October, so the 1st of November onwards. It's quite a way away, so probably not, but maybe you've booked to use that card for a car hire. And it may be that when you go to collect that car, you have to show the card you booked with. And if that card doesn't work, then you might be stuck. So have a look, see if you can change that card right now. And if you haven't done anything like that, don't use that card for those kind of things. Similarly like train tickets, if, you know, you need the card you booked with to take it from the machine. You know, if that's after the 1st November onwards, you won't be able to use that to get that card uh, that train ticket. So again, see if you've already done that, see if you can change the ticket details, collect the tickets now, whatever it might be, that could be a problem. That's the main thing you need to bear about just in spending. It's going to be fine for most people. There are a couple of other things you might not have thought about though, and this is the impact on your credit report and what happens to your points that you're earning. Let's look at the credit report thing first of all. When your account is closed, it obviously will mean that you lose a certain amount of your credit limit that you have across all your different accounts. You might only have a single credit card. This might be the only one you have. You might have multiple ones. And this will affect, therefore, it's called your credit utilization. I won't go into detail on this now. I have spoken about it in another video about how to improve your credit score. So do check that one out. But effectively, it may well mean that all of a sudden your credit limit across all your cards drops down and your spend on your cards pushes up. So as a percentage, it will see your credit report, your credit score, therefore, sort of dip a little bit. Could be short term. But it's worth bearing in mind. This will probably impact your credit report. Although conversely, sometimes lenders like to see you having less credit available to so see it might actually boost your credit score it's a weird mixed one there you don't actually quite know how it's going to work but it's important you know that it will have an impact the other thing to bear in mind is that the new card when we get the details of it won't be issued automatically you won't suddenly this card will close and you'll get a new one you will have to apply for that new card now you might want to apply for that new card it might be pretty good when i get the details i'll tell you all about it in one of these update videos but you might not necessarily get it you will have to go through the application they may have different criteria that they're looking for than they have before. They may well, you know, they have to credit search you and if thing, your situation has changed, you might not get it. So it's worth bearing in mind that just because you have this card right now, you might not get the replacement from them, okay? And again, when you do apply, remember as I talked about in my recent video, looking at the best, the top credit card rules, the three credit card rules you have to follow, always do an eligibility search before you apply, just to get a sense of your chances of getting accepted. You don't want to get rejected because that will impact your credit report as well. Now let's talk about the points, what happens here. Now, uh, John Lewis have said that if you have 500 points, which is the minimum you need to exchange for a five pound voucher, uh, you will get that, that's fine. They tend to do this in increments though. So it's not if you've got 502, they don't have a voucher for five pound and two pence. You need another 500 pounds and then they send you a 10 pound voucher because you've got two lots of 500. So let's say right now you have got uh, 100 points on your, on your account. That's what I've got, 100 points. If I don't get to 500 before the 31st of October, and if I do not also apply for and get accepted for the new card, I will lose those 100 points. The only way that I can get those 100 points is actually to spend more money to get to that 500 pound threshold. 
Similarly, if you've got, I don't know, 700 points right now, you'll get a five pound voucher for 500, but then you'll have 200 points left over, which again, you will not get them unless you are successfully able to get the new credit card, in which case they will be transferred over. So these residual points, they will be lost. So what do you do about it? Well, one option is to, in the next two and a half months, spend more on your um, uh, John Lewis credit card to, in order to earn those points. And I would make sure you don't spend more than you need to. Spend enough to get to that threshold. So for me, I've got 100 points on my card. I need 400 more points. Now, if I'm talking about spending just at John Lewis or Waitrose, where you get five points every four pounds spent, that means I would need to spend 320 quid, right? In the next two and a half months, 320 quid. Waitrose is my local supermarket. It's probably gonna be achievable for me to do that. If I spend that, pretty much bang on. It probably needs to be a little bit more because obviously you don't always get like the full cash back on if you're on the pence and stuff. But if I spend that money, I can keep an eye on the app. It will tell me exactly what my points I've got on a kind of ongoing basis. When I get to 500, I will stop using that card. And I think that's an achievable spend for me. Now, if you work out by looking at the app or your statements, or the statements can be a little bit behind. So ideally online banking will give you the most accurate uh, example, accurate figure of what, how many points you've got right now. Uh, if you think it's difficult for you to spend that much money, maybe just cut your losses and see what happens and wait and see what the new card is and see if you can get it and hope the points will be transferred across. Don't just spend money at Waitrose and John Lewis for the sake of it just to get three or four pounds worth of a voucher. But it's important to note that, that is what's happening there. And as I said, as soon as we have details of that new card, I will tell you about it in this video, which is a great reason to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future updates. Uh, let's talk about, uh, before we come on to the Amex stuff, because big things with Amex, let's talk about the new credit card from Asda. Their cashback credit card uh, launched last month. It gives you 1% back at Asda and 0.3% elsewhere. Doesn't sound too bad. You compare it to maybe what other cards have offered. However, there are some significant problems with it. I, I'm not going to all the details here. I've got a full um, article that I've published over on BeCleverYourCash.com that goes into it in a bit more detail. But fundamentally, the things you need to know about with this card are you need to have um, earned enough points to get a 10 pound voucher. That's the minimum redemption you've got, 10 pounds. So it's a lot of money you've got to spend, 1,000 pounds. If you shop at Asda all the time, then you might think that's fine, that's gonna be achievable. But you can get that 1% with other cards that you can use at Asda and not have that worry about that minimum sort of level of redemption. So again, reasons to shop elsewhere, use a different credit card instead of that one. Um, but also there are time limits. Even if you know, I'm Asda all the way, I really wanna go for it. You've got, once you earn the points, you've got 12 minutes to convert them 12 minutes, sorry, that would be really fast. Minute. 12 months to convert them from the uh, Asda credit card app into the new Asda Rewards loyalty scheme, which is launching in the UK later this year. And then once they're in there, you've only got another six months to turn them into a voucher. And once you've got a voucher, you've got 30 days to use them. So that might be fine, but I don't like any reward scheme where there is a time limit where it could run out. I'd much, much, much rather that you can earn your points, your cash back, whatever it is, and use them in your own time as and where, where, as you wish. The only thing that's interesting about this as the uh, cashback credit card is that you will be able to, from time to time, boost the value of the points you earn. Because you can also be able to earn points in the supermarket, a bit like you can with Club Card or Nectar. The scheme, when it launches, there will be you know, money, points back if you buy X or Y, whatever it might be. No idea what these boosted vouchers are gonna be. They're probably gonna be specific to certain uh, departments or certain time limits, but it may well be that that 1% you get at Asda increases it could be worth a lot more but i still think it's not worth the risk right now until we actually really see what those boosted vouchers are like and bearing in mind you can get uh, better deals elsewhere there is a short running promotion for new customers if you apply for the card before the 28th of august 2022 you will get two percent cash back at asda only still 0.3 percent elsewhere for the first 60 days you might think that's worthwhile very difficult to get two percent anywhere and if you do shop regularly at asda that's pretty good. But again, I still think this one isn't for you. Right, now let's talk about American Express. And actually, it all relates to the Platinum card. There are three things to tell you about here. And first of all, and this is for new applicants only. If you've already got an Amex Platinum, this won't affect you. But if you are a new applicant, and you might wanna be one of those when we come to the third point in a minute, uh, this is no longer a charge card. It's now a credit card. Now, the difference here for most of us, we wouldn't even notice it. The main thing is that Technically, a charge card has no credit limit, although apparently Amex already has, it did have sort of spending limits. You couldn't really spend as much as you wanted. There were still kind of gonna be some limits there. Um, and the other important thing difference was that a charge card had to be completely cleared every single month. The whole balance had to go. As a credit card, there will be a set credit limit. 
And also you have the option, if you wish, to pay off the minimum every single month or a set amount rather than the full amount. Now, as I always say to you guys, it's really, really, really vital that you do clear the entire balance every month anyway, because if not, you're gonna get charged interest. And particularly when it comes to a cashback or reward credit card, and particularly the platinum card, which has a massive fee, you are losing money doing it. It's counterproductive to do that. So although technically there is a difference there, really it's the same thing. You just set up that direct debit to clear the entire balance every single month with this card. The other interesting difference here though, is that now it's a credit card, it's covered by section 75 of the Consumer Credit Act. This is a really important law. You know, it is enshrined in law, so it has to be, uh, it will be enforced. The, the credit card company, their provider is equally liable if something goes wrong with your purchase as the retailer. And that could be quite handy if a company's gone bust. Now, previously with the old version of the card, so if you're an existing customer and you're still a charge card, Amex would have its own rules that would cover similar things. And they probably would do that anyway, but it wasn't legally enforceable. Now, as a credit card, it is legally enforceable. So that's worth knowing about. And uh, there is also another change in terms of how many supplementary cards you can get. If you're an existing customer, under the old deal, you could get a supplementary platinum card and you could also get four supplementary gold cards which didn't really do a huge amount, but maybe they were quite handy in terms of expanding the cover of the travel insurance feature that comes with it. In the new version, for new applicants as a credit card, there's just a single supplementary platinum card that you can get for free. Uh, again, not gonna be a massive difference for most people, which is worth knowing that this is one of the changes. And incidentally, at the same time, and this is really not gonna affect many people, American Express also have closed down the green credit card. I think this is the traditional Amex. If you saw a, an image of it years ago, that's maybe what you would recognize as a green card. I've not spoken about it before because it didn't really give any features that were worth paying the fee for. So again, it's gone. I don't think it makes much of a difference, but it's just worth knowing that it's no longer available. Right, now, if the, the next thing to tell you about the Platinum credit card, uh, and also the charge card, whichever version of the Amex Platinum you have, is a new offer, which is good, with some caveats. Uh, this is basically uh, £300 worth of dining credit every single year. It resets on January the 1st, and it will run until the end of 2024. So potentially there's £900 worth of refunds to your account you could get over the next two and a half years if you spend money at participating restaurants, which sounds fantastic, right? Well, a few things to bear in mind. One, there is a £575 annual fee with that card. So you are effectively paying for this free food anyway. It's just a way maybe to sort of justify if you're taking advantage of other benefits. And we'll come back to that in a second. Secondly, uh, that £300 a year is split into two lots of 150 quid. One is for UK dining, one is for overseas dining. Now, the UK dining, the participating restaurants in that list, there are some pretty decent ones, some very nice fancy ones, but also a few uh, more sort of generic chain ones, which are perfectly decent for the likes of um, the Ivy Brasserie and the Ivy Cafe and all that kind of things, which are around the country. So I think even if you're not in London or Manchester, uh, you will be able to find a restaurant at some point in the year that you'll be able to go and spend 150 quid in. And when you do, 150 quid will be added back to your account. In fact, you can do it incrementally if you want to. You could go and have, you know, four brunches or whatever there on your own, pay for your, just your own food and get that back in that time. So that's fine. I don't think you're going to have any problems getting that 150 quid back each year in the UK. However, overseas, the list is a lot smaller and it depends where you go. I think it's gonna be harder. So yes, if you happen to go each year to one of the destinations that has an offer and then also go to the restaurants in, that are in offer there. So for example, I had a quick look at Los Angeles. There are a number of restaurants in Los Angeles, but Los LA is massive, you know, and it's about, you know, depending where you are, it's not like you can, in London, you can pop on the tube and go to another one. You're gonna to have to drive to get to these places and all that. I think it's going out of your way to use it. And some places don't even have any restaurants listed at all, which, which you might think they would, but they don't. San Francisco, I think there's one restaurant listed in the whole of the place. Other places, nothing at all. So I think really you're looking here at 150 quid, the credit every year for the next few years, which if you have the card, fantastic, but it's not a reason to get the card. And this is the last point then on the American Express Platinum credit card is this new welcome bonus. This is a fantastic, this is the largest the most valuable welcome bonus I've seen, if you do it right and combine it with some of the other offers available on that card, it could be worth 880 pounds profit, okay? Massive, but there are lots of conditions. I've got an article on the blog which takes you through step by step. I'm gonna take you through the headlines now and then I would encourage you to read that and make sure you follow all of those because if I did all of it now, this would be a very, very even longer video than it already is. So, first of all, you need to check, are you eligible for the American Express Platinum credit card? You will be eligible for this if you have not had one of the four following cards in the last 24 months, okay? The American Express Platinum, so you either already got it or had it before, you're not eligible. 
The preferred rewards gold American Express. I know it's a popular one with you guys. You're not eligible if you've got that. The American Express green card, just told you about that one. It's now closed down to new applicants, but if you've had that in the last two years, you're not eligible. Or the American Express rewards credit card. Basically, these are the four cards that earn Amex membership reward points. If you have had any of those, tough luck. If you haven't, whether you've had another Amex, the Nectar card, the Platinum Cashback credit card, then maybe you will be able to get this. You're eligible for this in principle, okay? You need to apply, obviously, and check your eligibility, but you're eligible for the welcome bonus. That's a key part here. Because uh, not only has Amex doubled the welcome bonus, and they ran a similar offer to that earlier this year, which is when I got my card, and they've added on something on top. So fundamentally, the basics of this bonus are, rather than 30,000 bonus points, you get 60,000. Plus, you will also get a 200 pound credit to use on hotels or flights. Now to get those, both those parts of the bonus, you need to spend 6,000 pounds in six months. That's also a really, really important thing to consider there. Will you spend six grand in six months? Now, if you do all your everyday spending, your normal spending on the Amex credit card, if you retailers which would take Amex, supermarket, petrol, places like that, most of them will, you probably find you may well get there, particularly if you've got a household, family, and all that kind of thing. Work that out, that's really, really important. Do not spend more money than you're going to just to try and trigger this bonus, okay? You've really got to be spending things that you can afford on things you would normally buy. It's vital for all these welcome bonuses. But if you do that, you will get that bonus. In fact, that 60,000 points can be increased slightly as well. Not only will you get 6,000 points for the 6,000 pound spend, because you get a point for every pound you spend, if you go via a refer a friend link, you'll get an extra 5,000 points. So actually you're looking here at 71,000 points that you would get. Now these Amex reward points, what do you do with them? There are a few options. If you just swap them for a gift card at Amazon or someone like that, the transfer value is not amazing. It'd be worth 355 quid, okay? If you swap them into Avios points and then into Nectar points, which means you can use them at Sainsbury's, eBay, Argos, spoken about this quite a lot, it's suddenly worth 568 pounds, a lot, lot more money. Okay, so that straight away is a big amount of cash. You have to though factor in that you have a 575 pound annual fee. However, as soon as you trigger the bonus and you've got both of those bonus parts and used them, the membership points, you've either converted them or you've got a different membership reward card you can open later on the free Amex reward card is a good option there to keep those points alive. Then cancel that card, you'll get a pro rata refund. Now that is gonna be worth half that fee, let's say 280 quid, but that still gives you you know, a 280 pound bonus, right? If you're still looking, you're doing quite well. They've still got profit, yeah? A nice, healthy profit. 200 pound travel credit on top brings it up to, again, 480 quid, something like that. But there's also that platinum credit that I told you about, the dining credit I told you about a minute ago. 150 quid between now and December. Another 150 quid in January, February, that before you cancel the card. So you can add 300 quid on there. There's also 50 quid credit at Harvey Nicks. Use that for something you're gonna buy anyway possibly quite a good one for like beauty products, things like that. If you have expensive things you buy there, 50 quid between now and the end of December, another 50 quid next year, another 100 quid. That combined will mean you get a profit of about 880 quid. Again, check out my article with the step-by-step because there's more things you have to go through there to really understand all of this. And that potentially is a, is a, a minimum. You could obviously reach that um, target sooner, that six month, uh, six grand in six months, in, faster than six months, which means you could cancel the card earlier and get a larger pro re to re refund on the fee. If you think you're gonna do that, I would maybe delay your application until closer to the late October deadline. October the 25th, I think is the deadline, because it's important, I think, that you are able to get that January 1st reset for the restaurant credit and for the Harvey Nicks credit, but that might mean you get even more back. It may well be that you can use the 150 quid overseas dining credit. So again, more money coming back to you that way. There is travel insurance included in this card as well, which if you're going away, could be worthwhile in this instance, which again might save you even more money. And there'll be other kind of Amex credit. Shop Small will be back, I'm sure, in December. Other things like that, which maybe increase the money you get anyway. But I think most people, as long as you can spend six grand and six months and you're eligible, you should be able to get uh, 880 pounds profit from this, which I think is pretty, pretty decent. My name is Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think of the latest credit card news and offers in the comments below. Make sure you hit that like button and tell your friends. And in the meantime, here are some more videos that might help you get the best from your spending.